Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. gonna plant this morning but ain't gonna get to have it because it's been pouring down rain all morning long but i got some corn sprouts started here i got watermelons that are coming up y'all check these out some sprouted that there still got the seed hanging on the leaf we got some still sprouting i don't know what the deal is why they didn't all sprout at the same time this Seems to be the way everything's going. A lot of this over here is flower seed. But what I was going to show you is I opened my freezer, dug out a bunch of my seed, and I, I, I have several boxes like this, y'all. This is a lot of tomatoes, squash. I, I don't know what all. And I just, I've had, I mean, I've got, this is like a free basil seed that came. When you order from Baker Creek, they give you one pack of free seeds if you order a certain amount. I had elderberries. I done planted them. Look, I even say plantain seed. Uh, I don't know what all. This is a lot of stuff I've got. I don't even know what it is. I've got, that's all okra. Y'all, I saved some seed now. Tell you. But anyway, Cherokee purple, as you can see, I got right on there. They just packs of all kind of seeds. But that's just my a lot of my store-bought seeds are in these boxes. Let's go look at what I pulled out of the freezer. I did want to mention this. This is the first time I have ever had, this is peaches and cream. This comes from a local co-op. Now y'all, I do jump the camera around a lot when I'm doing like this filming. I apologize. This feed sack is lined. It had a, another sack in there. This is just to keep, if anything else gets wet, it don't wick. Like if the freezer goes off or if I happen to unplug it, to plug something else in and fail to plug it back up. I'm not gonna say that's ever happened, but it might have. Look on this table, y'all. This is my grandpa's old seed. This, um, and it's tucked down in there, I can't even. This is a somewhat running white hole pea, black eyed pea, pink eye, whatever you call it. This is rattlesnake pole beans I've saved. This right here, we're gonna grow. I did not grow this last year. This is a running butter bean. Y'all see how this butter bean gets almost a reddish tint to it. That is a, a big, large butter bean compared to this butter bean. And this is a, I'm not sure this, y'all, label your stuff because I knew what it was to put it in there. Oh, I know what that is. No label. I have no clue if this is the willow leaf that I have some of, or if this is the thermogreen bush butter bean. So, you know, big difference on whether you want to plant them to. If one's running all over everywhere, and one ain't, so label you stuff. Like, see right here, top pick purple hull. I've got a pile of purple hull seeds, y'all. We're gonna go through this. Zipper cream, large amount. G90 corn. This is Johnny Pete, and that's my grandpa's name. That's his pea seed. That's some gourd seed. That's the original Johnny Pete seed that I have. That's from 2012 is when that was put in there. That was not the oldest. That was put in there after he died. Somebody else had grew them. I think my Uncle Sam had grew these and put them in there. I have them. And then the uh, original bag over here... I don't know which one it is. They was in another bag, and I think I rebagged them. I think this is part of them that my grandpa had saved. It was in there, and I planted them, and they sprouted. White trucker's corn. Now, y'all, I have a pile of that. I have a box in here. Look at here. Dried. I've checked it. No weevils. Seed. Seed. This under here 
is Shoepig. This is Shoepig. This is the trucker's white. There's some gold and vinyl that I've already got. Trucker's white corn. That's some more gold and bantam corn. I had got this from Seed Saver Exchange, y'all. I honestly have not made this seed do well. This seed has grown in no telling what climate. It has not acclimated to here yet, so I have grown it, saved my own, grown it, saved my own, trying to get it acclimated to this climate. So we're going to see. This again is shoe pick. The way I know, you see how long and skinny these kernels are it tells me that's shoe pick not to mention i did write shoe pick on there and i don't know if i spell shoe pick right peppers y'all and there's no way i'll but i do have pepper seeds you know some push comes to shove so this is this is this is getting ready to plant i've got them out of the freezer let them get adjusted to the temperature so they'll stay out some point this week we'll plant We're going to do some planting. Told y'all that this week was going to be wide open. It ain't nothing but knees and elbows. Now, I was going to start early this morning. And it started raining. It had rained up until around dinner. So, this is a mud hole. Now, if you look behind me, these trellises, from where this trellis right here is, up has not been tilled. Actually, technically, none of it has been tilled. But what I did do, and I'm going to go back and show you some clips from yesterday uh, when I got out here working and preparing stuff before the rain, obviously. When I pulled this uh, tarp up, there was still a lot of green stuff under there. I got my torch. The wind, y'all, was so bad, I couldn't burn it. Uh, I mean, it was burning it, but it wouldn't. I needed to get the grass out. I'm in a hurry. So for the sake of time, what I did is I took my cultivators and I went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows right here. And I rode them up because I needed to lay my rows out. The reason I needed to lay them out is between those panels that are separated, that, that's cattle panels on T-post. That's where my cucumbers and that sort of thing is going to go that's going to run. This skip over a row i wanted to be able to make sure i could take my tractor with them cultivators in between there in case no till don't work for me so obviously this got plowed so if you want to call it we till this i'm going to go with it it don't really matter the technical term don't make no difference to me but that's probably the last time it'll ever be plowed if this works for me uh, but what i want to do is i wanted to lay them out with the tractor so that in the worst case scenario, I can go back through there and I'm never going to take these back down. These are treated posts and that is goat wire, I call it. It gets wider as it goes up. And I, right now it's a little high off the ground. I can lower and raise that up and down those posts down there the way I've got this put up. But I spaced on down, down there. You can see there's another one right there going down. So I've got, so I'm going to plant today these running big butter beans and rattlesnake pole beans. Now I've got out here in the mud and put these trellises up, but I've got this spaced out to where I can uh, get the tractor in between there if, if worst case scenario happens and I need to, uh, to get in there. So I think I'm gonna put my rattlesnake pole beans on this row. So I'm fixing to go through and start planting them. Uh, I'll probably, in fact, I already come through and I sprinkled some 688 on top of the ground while this dirt is moist. Uh, I'll probably, and I went light with it, y'all. I didn't put a heavy coat of fertilizer on there. I'm probably going to come back right before I know it's going to rain. We're going to get storms coming in Wednesday. So I'll probably come back in late in the evening so that the sun, because that sun, if it shines on that fertilizer on top of the ground, will absorb a lot of the north, nitrogen out in this wind. This wind will dry out that ground and it'll take some of that away from it. It'll leach it out. That rain will soak it down into the ground. Now, yes, rain will wash some of it away as it erodes, but it'll a slow rain, it'll absorb into the ground. So that's why I'm going to do two applications of it, light applications. So let's get started planting. I'm going to try to keep these videos, y'all, not too long. And I keep telling y'all I'm editing. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying. Y'all just pray for me. 
but we fixing to slot in this mud and see if we can plant. So I'm gonna get a little bit of footage of me. I'm gonna plant this all by hand with my dibbler. I normally do a fur, put the fertilizer in, heal it back up and take my push planter and go down there. And y'all, I could leave my push planter over and planting that, but being it's a mud hole, that is not gonna happen. So we're gonna take the dibbler. Y'all know what a dibbler is. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar. This is this is some of them old timey tools. Uh, but anyway, hang with me. We're gonna get some of this stuff planted today. Through this week, we're gonna do some planting. I did wanna tell y'all one thing. The corn, my white trucker's corn that I'm gonna use like for making cornmeal cause I like white cornmeal and I do like some yellow cornmeal too. So I don't know, I'll probably just use some sweet corn for that and I'll just gather up what's left over at the end of the year. But the sweet corn, I'm gonna plant a row or two rows at a time every two weeks so that as it gets ready that I've got a constant stages of corn getting ready. Because if you plant all of it and it all gets ready at one time, well then for about two weeks, you've got fresh corn on the cob and then you don't have any more. So this down here, I'm not gonna do a whole big corn plant video unless I may plant a patch. My Uncle Jesse's wanting to plant up there, put some watermelons, we're gonna put watermelons up there. We may till up and, and plow, plant a bunch of corn up there, I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna plant like a row or two at a time. And then two weeks later, because usually corn will get ready and it'll stay good for a week, week and a half to two weeks depending on the weather. If it's moist and rainy and cool weather and damp and it's overcast several days, you get a little more time out of it being right. But if it's sunny and hot in the middle of the summer, and that's normally what we have in Mississippi, then you get about a week and a half at best of good corn and then it starts getting hard and it's not as good. It's still edible, it's just not as good. Let's get this planted. Oh, this is bad time consuming this way. I think I'm gonna do it like this. Oh yeah, that's much better. Much more faster. And I got a lot more control. Now I'm not planting these very deep. Oh. And I'm spacing them about six inches apart. I don't know how, I, I really don't know how much I ought to space them. Uh, but now these beans run a lot and they produce a lot. So it's easy to really overplant. I have had them get the vine. They be so many of them be so thick that they just pull the trellis down and I really don't want that. So what I'll probably do is come back with my hoe and uh, cover these holes up. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, this is the first time I have planted by hand like this. Quite satisfied. Y'all, same thing with these butter beans. I'm just took my dibbler. I'm just dropping one seed per hole. Uh, I'm sure I could get away with a few more than that. So I don't see the need in it. I planted them fairly thick and I still got that much left. And that was just what was loose in the bag. There was two. Uh, quart Ziploc bags in here full, so I've got plenty of seeds. But that is the rattlesnake pole beans planted, and the uh, and I don't know exactly all the name of these butter beans. I, I re if somebody knows what they are, which I don't think is possible for anybody to know, because they've probably probably got a good idea, in other words. But there's a uh, 
it's a large butter bean and uh this grows good it's a running butter bean so anyway i'm happy to have these two rows planted today in the mud i've got the rest of the week to focus on some of now i'm not too concerned with my cucumbers and stuff like that that i'm going to put plants in the ground but i may come out here and uh put a few seeds in the ground just for good measure because i don't mind having too many uh I usually lose a cucumber or two plants throughout the year. I don't know, they turn yellow. But we're going, once we get them in and get them up above the ground, I am going to come back and straw around them to prevent some blight. So y'all hang with me. We're going to make these clips throughout the week. I may repeat some stuff in this video. I don't know because I'm going to be filming a little bit every day as I plant and try to put it all into one video. I guess though we run off, we better cover them up a little. Raking dirt down this road, oh. and they is. I wished I'd, I'd have a hundred dollar bill for if I could have covered these whole garden with that plastic when I covered this end because y'all, this end down here is doing very, very well. The weeds is dead. I don't have anything. I'm fighting. I just regret that I didn't have time to cover it all. But we're gonna get this covered up. It's going to be all right. We're going to have a garden. If the weeds take part of it, I am not afraid to go get the tractor and come in here and start plying it. We'll back up and punt. Ain't that what you're supposed to do? I am not one of them. I'm going to do it this way, a bus kind of people. If this don't work, I'll take the tractor and I'll go right down the edge of this and I'll pull all this grass out. But I think we can mitigate it. We got these covered up. What I'm doing right here is putting in some squash, zucchinis. Now I'm only planting the ones that were up really large in size. Uh, and I've got some that just not quite there yet. They're just not ready to be put in the ground. Uh, but it's not imperative to, to put these in this moon phase. The moon phase is strictly to help with germination so that when you put in a bunch of seeds that gravitational pull of the moon does something to help all of those seeds germinate better. The moon phase is strictly for better germination rate. It does not mean that every plant's gonna do better because you planted there. These seeds are already germinated so it don't matter if I plant them or if I wait. Um, and I'm gonna tell y'all something. I have talked myself out of planting my peas and uh, I will be planting a little bit of corn here, there, and yonder. Like I said, I already got one row up because it's still going to be a little bit cool to get a growth rate. Yes, they'll all come up. They'll all germinate, but they'll sit there dormant till it gets warm. Grandpa always said don't plant seed crops before the 1st of May. It's not because they won't come up. It's not because they won't produce. You just won't get as much. They won't do as well. Till that soil at night is around 70 degrees, and we've got a whole string of nights coming. It's going to be down in the 40s and the 50s. The soil is not yet warm enough to plant everything. Now, I did go ahead. You see me plant my some butter beans, one row of butter beans and one row of uh, peas. I'm going to hold up right there. Uh, I'm going to put these large plants in the ground that need to be in the ground because they just get too long, and I don't want to repot them again. I've seen some people already planted their peas. I, I promise you, if I wait till the next moon phase, which will be around the first, second week of May, I'll have, I'll produce more peas per row of, or per square foot, however you want to measure it, than whoever's putting their peas in the ground now. Uh, yeah, they'll make peas. I'm not saying at all that their peas won't come up, won't make, they will but they're not going to get as much out of them as they could if they wait. It's just a little early. There's an old man around here used to tell us, so Flannoid Lofton, he'd say that uh, you don't plant your crop, he said, until them folks that's sitting on the bank fishing, he said, if they sitting on the bucket, he said, the ground's still too cool to plant. But now if they sitting flat on the ground, you can go ahead and plant. <laughs> 
So keep that in mind. When you drive by, do you see them folks out there at the lake that's fishing on the bank? If they up chairs and sitting on buckets, you know the ground's still too cool. But now if they go ahead and sit flat down on the ground and fish, you can plant your crop. But we're gonna get these right here that I'm planting are butternut squash. Now this is gonna run a little bit. So I spreaded these out and I've got five right here because I lost one out of the six that I started. Uh, right back here, I've got zucchini. I'm gonna come right down here and I'm gonna put in some golden zucchini. And uh, I'm gonna get these put in. This is all in my no-till right here. This ground, I didn't do nothing but cover it with straw. I haven't done anything else to it. Um, I did come through because this straw and compost has not been here long. I did sprinkle a light coating of 688 fertilizer and on top of the ground. It'll leach down into the soil. Uh, but I don't want to I don't want to be misleading on anything. We are working our way into a full no-till in this garden spot here. Uh, but you seen me plow that up over yonder that that I had to do that. I'm gonna ease my way into this because I have got to be successful and I've just got to get it. It's probably better to ease into something it is to just dive into it head first. Oh. Now, if I had ground covers and things like that, I could do it. But one thing, I wanted my rose and I'll tell y'all why. Uh, let me explain the rose right quick for you. Some of these places, this stuff is a little bit thick. I will be thinning it out some. Spreading it around just. I, I put it thick for the purpose of uh, trying to suppress the grass from growing or the weeds from growing. But let me explain the uh, the rowing. I, the reason I wanted rows. Uh, you can plant in the flat I have planted in the flat which is where you just till everything flat or leave the ground flat and you just plant your rows right there in certain areas that works good I'm on a bit of a slope here uh, it's not a bad slope but water does run down it I need those rows to take that water at least to the end that way if it does wash a gully out it'll wash it out down there on an end Every year that I till this, it washes it out deep. This year, it has not washed it out much because I haven't tilled it. Now, over there where I put that trellis, there was already a low spot. It's holding water over there pretty good. So it's somewhat of a mud hole. But in the last couple of years, we've had an excessive amount of rainfall in the early part of the year, uh, through through middle of June, actually. Uh, so what it has done last year, I absolutely lost my rattlesnake pole beans because I had tilled it. The only way I could get in here, if I waded in here with a hoe, it was I'd sink knee deep nearly in mud. It just was terrible. You couldn't get in here to even hand hoe it. So what I did was when it got wet enough or dry enough that I could get the tractor in there and that was the only way I had four rows of butter beans, uh, which is a, a bush lima bean. We call them butter beans. That's all I'll ever refer to it as, more than likely. Um, and I plowed them with that tractor. Well, when I plowed those uh, running rattlesnake pole beans, it hooked the vines and just pulled the whole plant side at the end of the row. I had no choice. I tried to replant. But without teal and, and, and the way I had it set up, they just, they barely come up. They just didn't do good. So I, I never did make rattlesnake pole beans last year. So that's part of the reason I, I planted them and, and that no teal and I got my trellis up. The trellis will be permanent. I'll always put them there. Now, yes, I won't be rotating that crop. I'll have to come in and add compost to it every year, but that's something that I plan on doing anyway now. Uh, we're going to go to composting these rows this leaf litter and mulch this will compost itself down so that'll take care of it here in this spot 
moved oh. over so I could finish explaining about these rows. It allows me to put a plan in, the water go to one end, and this plant, the roots can, the water can drain away from that root. We've had so much rain that I have lost like peppers and things, which now all the peppers is in the raised bed. The tomatoes have mostly went to the raised bed. There'll probably be some tomatoes come back down here because I've kept planting and kept starting seed and I'll wind up putting a bunch down here somewhere. But with the row, it's kind of like a raised bed in theory that that water, if it rains and rains and rains, then it can drain away from that plant and that plant, because if it's in the flat and it's just sitting in all that wet ground, you'll drown, you'll get root rot and your plants won't do good. So that is my purpose for rowing everything and wanting all of my beans on the row. If it, if it don't rain a lot, the moisture will hold in those valleys. The roots can kind of reach for it. it it's, it's just better in my opinion. Uh, I like raised beds. Raised beds produce better. And I think that's why the rows in a garden produce better because if it does rain too much, you can do it. If you till in the flat, it's, you, you need a perfect rain situation for that to work. But anyway, we've got our peppers in in the bed. Let me take you up there and show you this. I can't help but come when I come through here to uh, pull weeds. This pine straw was very thick in here for the purpose that this Bermuda grass had got in here and obviously it's a big running vine. You may see some out here. Uh, it just, I was gonna pull up some of it right here. This is Bermuda grass and y'all it runs like crazy. Uh, big long vines, well it had took this bed. It come in through these cracks, it was a big ant bed. My peppers, I had some peppers that I had store bought, some bell peppers and uh, and uh, some hot banana. I wanted to go ahead and put them in. So I went ahead and planted all the peppers that I had because they started on the first time I planted, done well and they're up pretty good size. So, But when I went to plant that grass that I tried to suppress this pine straw, it had not grown. It was sticking through a little bit, but it was still so full of vines. Y'all, I raked all the pine straw out. I took a potato rake, which is, looks like a hoe, but it's four tongs down. And I dug and dug, and I basically tilled this bed. But I pulled all of those roots out that I could. And then I put my pine straw back. So I wanted to make sure you knew what wound up happening. This, it was suppressing it by far way better than it was without the pine straw. It was all yellow. And I think it had pretty much killed a lot of it. But I went ahead and pulled the pine straw out, pulled all the roots out. So I don't think I'm gonna have as much problem with it this year as I did last year. Plus this pine straw is gonna keep it suppressed. But uh, we do have all our peppers in. I wanted you to see these peppers and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my collards and stuff behind me. If I'm gonna just try to see how long they'll hold out and I'm gonna put in some lettuce and different things in that bed probably. Uh, as I transplant it from one place to another and keep starting seeds, cause we eat a lot of lettuce, eat it with a lot of salads and stuff. So I'm gonna keep a lot of that going. Uh, I like cabbage. I eat cabbage a good bit throughout the year. If I can keep it alive, I don't know in the heat, it don't do as well. But thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Like, subscribe. We're gonna get to fishing here pretty quick. So you, got, you guys that have been holding out, waiting for fishing videos and other stuff, if the water's about to get right in the in the swamp where we go catch some catfish, but it's fixing to rain all the rest of the week, so we'll see how much rain we'll get, what it does to the water levels, but I mentioned to go run some set lines. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see y'all next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all.